As of right now, the hunt for Brian Laundrie is still on, and while authorities search for him, many news outlets are highlighting the suspicious things that Brian did in the months before his fiance Gabby Petito was found dead in Wyoming. I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know right here on IO. For starters, the 23-year-old fugitive had uploaded some pretty sinister-looking artwork to his social media pages. He described himself as a comic book fan, but among his various Instagram posts were a lot of very bizarre drawings. A majority of this artwork was shared just months before he began his cross-country trip with Gabby. This one piece especially was chilling. It shows a man wearing a wolf mask holding a blood-soaked knife as the character's pants and jacket are also covered in blood splatters. Another post from back in July 2020 was captioned with Grim Reaper leading sheep to the slaughter and a mouse trap. This one had a herd of sheep surrounded by figures wheeling scythes. In another Instagram post, he said that he and Gabby had been reading the horror satire novel called Lullaby by Chuck Palahniuk. In the caption, he writes, Reading is different than any other consumption of media. It takes more effort than staring at a screen half alive. It allows you to use your brain rather than melt it, and there is no author more stimulating to me than Chuck Palahniuk. The book also tells the story of a journalist who is writing this article about crib death and notices a bizarre connection to the deaths of his own wife and infant. He then becomes a serial killer who kills people over minor annoying things. In another snap, he is slicing an apple while reading a book called Rant. This was a book that is told in the form of an oral biography and is based around a high school rebel. In the synopsis, it's described as a mind-bending vision of the future as only Chuck Palahniuk could imagine. So, you know, he really likes this author. In the caption, Laundry wrote, The effing craziest out of all of Chuck's books on my shelf. I can't fathom how he must have written this one. I'd love to preach all of the insane twists and turns, but all I can say is that I'll never forget the name Rant Casey or Green Taylor Sims. And according to the timeline, Laundrie also returned to Florida on August 17th, just days before he and Gabby had an incident outside of a grocery store in Moab. He then apparently had left a motel in Salt Lake City to help his father, Chris Laundrie, empty out a storage unit that contained Gabby's possessions. He then returned to Utah, where he and Gabby would both check out of their hotel on August 24th. In a statement to the press, the Laundry family lawyer confirmed this timeline and explained further by saying, Brian flew home to Tampa from SLC on August 17th and returned to SLC on August 23rd to rejoin Gabby. To my knowledge, Brian and Gabby paid for the flights as they were sharing expenses. Brian flew home to obtain some items and empty and close a storage unit to save money as they contemplated extending the road trip. What many people were curious about though was what this locker had inside of it. Why would he need to go back to that locker and empty out that locker if it supposedly had just Gabby's belongings in it? You'd think that she'd want to come along for the ride for that one. By August 25th, just a couple days after Brian returned, some of Gabby's last text messages were sent to her family as they reached the Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. Weeks later, on September 19th, Gabby's remains were found. A woman named Jessica Schultz also claimed to have spotted a man she believed to be Brian and said that he was acting weird where Gabby's body was found. I also saw some other YouTube channels going more in depth with that video that was taken by those other van life YouTubers that showed Gabby's van parked on the side of the road. What's shocking is that as their vehicle is approaching, the white Ford Transit van, you can actually see the back door of the van closing. And Jessica Schultz said that she had seen Brian in the van on August 26th and claimed that she saw the vehicle again on two other occasions, the 27th and the 28th. She went on to say, you know when you're out in the middle of nowhere, your hackles go up when you see something that's out of the ordinary. On top of that, his own sister, Cassie Laundrie, said that her brother and her parents went camping on September 6th, just 75 miles from their home in Northport, Florida. But according to her, they only stayed on the campsite for six hours. She also claimed that Brian did didn't mention Gabby's name once the entire time. And when speaking to reporters outside of the family home, she said, I am losing my parents and my brother and my children's aunt and my future sister-in-law on top of this. And when asked to clarify what she meant by losing her parents, Cassie added, they're not talking to us either. Followed by, if I knew I would say, I don't know, when asked why not. So far, there have been dozens of sightings of who people believe to be Brian Laundry, and even Dog the Bounty Hunter has joined in on this search. These things that Brian did though are definitely all very suspicious. And as always, we would love to hear your thoughts and all of this down in those comments below. For now, though, I've been your host, Johnny Rogers, and until next time, stay classy, YouTube. Early strike.